Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krogh. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos Week 6 Waivers coming at you hot. Alex, Jason here for the Sackos. Alex, how the... How did week five go? Are you 0-5? Do you got your first W staring at you? Uh, if Janu doesn't have 19 uh, tomorrow night on our uh, first edition of Tuesday Night Football this year, then yes, I will be 1-4. Thank you for asking. Tuesday Night How are football. you? Uh, well, I've been better. Basically, my, uh, <laughs> my teams all sewered themselves. Uh, Clyde Edwards Elaire completely underperformed in a very much plus matchup. Um, I'm a little discouraged. However, I want to let you know that Johnny Smith has scored 22 in a game already this season. So good luck tomorrow. Yeah, I find myself rooting for COVID-19 for the first time in my life, or and, and I do not recommend doing that, but uh, I'm also facing Josh Allen in a league and I'm up like 12, and so if that game gets canceled, then I win. So I'm somewhat rooting for COVID, just to, just one person. It's probably not appropriate, but... That's extremely not appropriate. Do they have backups? Do none of these people have backups? Nope. nope. Hey, man, if you're not going to put yourself in a position to get points, even in the face of adversity, then there's really not a whole lot anybody's can yeah. do for you. Right. So. All right. <clears throat> let's uh, let's get started on these waivers. Now, I do want to say before we dive into everybody, you can also read about all of our waiver wire recommendations on our website, the fantasy football dot com. We post weekly uh, waiver wire and also uh, sit start articles for you there. So that was something that started last week. I feel like it started okay, and we're going to keep on doing it now. So before we get started, go ahead, hit that like, subscribe button, hit the bell if you're watching on YouTube. Let's uh, spread the love and see if we can't move up some uh, viewing lists and get some new viewers. So, all right, there we go. Raise the roof. I would I would also say before we before we get started on this that really when we're talking about players and what we would put in like for a fab, it's only well, we're saying that if you want the player that you that you're probably gonna have to bid that much. Generally, a lot of these guys I do throw zero bids on or just a couple bucks here or there just to see if I can get them. But generally, when we're making our recommendations from a fab perspective, you should not be bidding that much on every single player, or you're gonna like you're just going to run out of money. So I would just highly recommend that you only bid on players that you actually need. And we're trying to break down what you need to bid in order to get them. Please Absolutely. do not go and spend 15% of fab on Andy Dalton this week. If you don't need a quarterback, more fab, more As problems. Example. You started off with the red rocket. So let's just stay there and start with QBs. Andy Dalton first up. Dak obviously had a season ending uh, ankle injury. Looked gruesome, Ugh. by the way. Just hanging there, diddly dangling by some soft tissue. Let's hope it's a cramp, Jason. <laughs> Let's hope it's a cramp. <laughs> I had really bad cramps. It was 2020. Oh, man. Really bad. Dak was quarterback three uh, behind Wilson and Mahomes, averaging 20, 27 fantasy points per game. Uh, Andy Oof. Dalton filling yeah. in for the rest of the season owned or rostered, I should say in 0.2% of ESPN fantasy leagues. What do you think he's going to produce there? Are you thinking 70% of the production 60%? I don't think it's going to be as low as half Dalton can throw the ball. I don't know. Yeah, he seemed to really like targeting C.D. Lamb uh, when he came in, which Dalton is Schultz encouraging just for C.D. Lamb owners. To totally went away. So he went from, hey, top six tight end the rest of the way to, oh, no way. crap. I, I think the only thing that this really does help is I think it actually helps Zeke's value because I think they get back to running the ball more because they have to. So that that's just how I look at it. I I think it hurts. I mean, I, I think it, you have to discount CD Lamb at least slightly. Obviously, Dalton Schultz, it hurts. Um, Gallup, it hurts. Cooper, it hurts. 
uh, Wilson, like it's everybody. So I, I think Andy Dalton will give you, I, I mean, Dak was on pace for like 6,800 yards or something. Something. So obnoxious. even like 75% of that. Yeah. Even 75% of that. Do you really think Andy Dalton is a, is a 4,200 yard passer or something like that? Probably not over the course of a 16 game season. So I, I think that if you're in rough shape, you can probably go get him. But there's there's probably better options like Bridgewater might be available. Fitzpatrick might be available. There, there's always enough people that you can go pick up. And I think Andy Dalton just kind of falls in that bucket of quarterbacks that are probably going to be available for a spot start in a, on a weekly basis. I'm not sure if you want to rely on Andy Dalton being your starter every week going forward. I'm just going to go out on a limb, even though I don't really think it's much of a limb. It's more of a nub. It's a very short limb. Uh, and say that I, I really think it's just kind of <laughs> as bad for everybody as a whole. That, uh, that defense can't stop any opponent and get any opponent off the field. So opponents are going to keep scoring at the same clip that they were, at least in my mind. Um, unless yep. they are able to really just turn into a complete ball control offense and try to keep scores low that way. But if they're getting the scores run up on them, then they're going to have to keep passing just like they were. And I just don't think that Andy's going to be able to do it how Dak did. So I'm just, I'm really interested to see what the, the Cowboys, like what everybody's scores do over the next several weeks, moving forward with Andy. Um, I will say something that sort of caught my eye and I thought was intriguing uh, Ed Werder of ESPN uh, reported Amari Cooper snap counts uh, through the first five weeks. Um, his percentage has decreased week over week. Started in week one from 94%. Week two, 91%. Week three, 79%. Week four, 76%. And then l- this last week, week five, Amari was only in on 63% of snaps. So they are, Hmm. maybe it's something, maybe it's nothing. I don't, I don't know really how to explain why Amari's kind of being phased out over the last few weeks. Um, Unless you're just seeing CD lamb say hello. The the only observation I have to add to that. Yeah. But the, the thing is though, they, it almost seemed like they were taking turns because even when they got down the goal line, like I was getting texts of what, you know, is Amari Cooper not even playing? Like what's going on? They, it, it's like, it was like Gallup and Wilson down by the, down by the end zone. It's like, what the heck is going on here? So it almost seemed like they're rotating them around like they're running backs. Um, You know how a lot of times at the beginning of the second quarter, beginning of the fourth quarter, the backup running back comes in. It almost seemed like they're doing that with their wide receivers which is somewhat unconventional, but that's the only explanation that I have for it. Yeah, I don't know. So you mentioned 15% of fab for Andy. Is that, is that your number? Is that if you rostered, if you had Dak, what would you spend to go out and try and get Andy Dalton? Specifically Andy Dalton. Yes, if you I had Dak, let's say you had know. Dak, I, there, and there's, there's nothing on the waiver wire except for Andy. How much would you spend to try to get him? If there's literally nobody else, fifteen or twenty percent is reasonable. If there's literally no other quarterbacks available, if you're in a two quarterback league, obviously it's a little bit different, and you could potentially spend a little bit more. What if Goff and Fitzpatrick I, are there? I think you're probably looking. I'm going after Goff. Um, I would also go after Fitzpatrick before I went after Andy Dalton, probably. Wow. Okay. I guess I would say I would probably go like 10% of fab on Dalton. Um, And I don't really care if I miss him. I'm at least in redraft. I'm okay streaming weeks a week. Uh, If anybody, you know, our, our regular watchers and listeners might know, but we pegged um Teddy Bridgewater to have a, a good game against the Falcons the Falcons last week and he had what th- over 300 yards and two touchdowns. So 
we're okay playing the streaming game and we're going to have basically we had 300 yards in the first half. Yeah, so I'm okay playing streamers based on matchups. Basically play whoever's playing the Falcons if you can. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to go out and break the bank. Yeah, the, the only positive that Andy Dalton has going for him is the fact that he, he plays in the NFC East. So you're getting Washington twice. You're getting Philly twice. And uh, the, they play the Giants again week 17, unfortunately for him. Uh, Dalton's playoff schedules at Cincinnati, home against San Francisco, which suddenly had a very leaky defense. Yeah, they uh, did. And home against Philadelphia for the playoffs, 14, 15, 16. So, uh, I mean, potentially okay matchups um, in, in you know, during the playoffs. So, I mean, if you're in a rough spot, why not? But hopefully you can find somebody better to stream on a weekly basis. Yeah, and while you brought up the 49ers, let's talk about the quarterback they're facing this week. Jared Goff, currently quarterback 10 on the season. Uh, faces the Niners this week who give up the 13th most points to QBs. Um, they did just give up almost 28 to Fitzpatrick in week five. Uh, Jared Goff currently rostered in about 47% of leagues. How much fab would you spend out spend to go and try and land Goff? Well, considering he's my starter in our 12 team league, I think that'll tell you that I do actually think relatively highly of Jared Goff. He has the weapons. Uh, he, It's not quite as good as Andy Dalton's weapons, probably, but Jared Goff is a much better quarterback than Andy Dalton is. So he makes up for it in talent, what he might lack in talent around him. Although that's, I mean, the, the Rams still have an abundance of pass catchers uh, and a very good offensive coach. I I think Jared Goff, uh, the fact that he's rostered in less than 50% of leagues is very surprising, especially when you bring up that he is QB 10 on the year. Yeah. That doesn't really seem like it makes any sense <clears throat> at, at all. Um, that That's why I would say, if, face between the two, I would rather spend the fab on Goff than I would Andy Dalton. If you had Big Ben, would you drop him to go get Goff? No. Okay. Just wondering where your head's at. All right. Uh, I don't really have a whole lot to add to that. I think I would maybe spend like 5% of fab on any of these guys, really. My last quarterback here, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Currently quarterback seven. Averaging almost 21 fantasy points per game. (laughs) If you take out week one. Just like we all drew it up. Yeah. If you take out the week one dud against New England. He's averaging 24 and a half fantasy points per game, which is more than Cam, Lamar, Big Ben, Brady, and Deshaun. <laughs> wow. If you leave the that's, week... Uh, that's outstanding. If you leave the week one dud in, the only player that passes him in weekly average out of those players is Cam. He is still ahead of Lamar, Big Ben, Brady, and Deshaun. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense he's rostered in less than Why 20% you, no, of leagues sucks sometimes he's rostered in less than 20% wow. of leagues and he plays the Jets this week I don't think the matchup scares me at all I think that they're um, like against <laughs> rating is sort of inflated because their last three matchups are Kyler who can't stop throwing picks uh, Driscoll, the Driscoll Rippian combo, and Phil Rivers, who was basically self imploded all season. So I would absolutely fire up Fitz Magic and trust him to go out and throw 250 to 350 in a couple scores against the Jets if you're in a tight spot. Are you, are, are, are you going to drop Lamar Jackson to go pick up Ryan Fitzpatrick? Yeah, absolutely. If, didn't you see that the Ravens are all the Ravens offense players came together and talked about how frustrated they are? Gosh, our freaking our social media coordinator was like, oh, Ravens, you're looking for a way to jumpstart your offense. Why don't you give the give the ball more to the guy that had one carry for 34 yards in J.K. Dobbins? Such a freaking joke, man. Yeah, the the tight the Titans broke their offense last year. I guess uh, Lamar Jackson currently QB eleven and Ryan Fitzpatrick QB seven. Giggity Fantasy you. football twenty twenty baby. Man, um, yikes! All right, well, I think that's enough for. Uh, <laughs> I think 
I think that's enough uh, QB I, waivers. I, I, I think I think you and me are very pro stream quarterbacks. If you can find the matchups a week in advance that you want to play, be looking out for the Falcons schedule, play the Teddy Bridgewaters of the world, play the uh, play the Jared Goffs of the world. Fitz go magic. figure out when Matthew Stafford is face. Like, yeah, just go. Go and figure out, like starting Daniel Jones this weekend against, or, you know, whoever's playing the Cowboys. Maybe Alex Smith is playable when they play Dallas. Who knows? Um, it's just one of those things where just be comfortable knowing what the numbers say and playing the matchups. The defense gives up a ton of passing yards. All right, roll the dice. Just go with it. If you don't have a solidified top five guy, then you're, you might as well just roll the dice. Yeah, actually, you know what we're going to do? I was going to save this for the end, but we talked about streaming. Let, and I think we should do our quarterback and uh, I th- we should do any streams I feel like should be on our Tuesday show. So that way they are yeah. uh, live for people before they put in all of their roster claims or waiver claims. Um, Mitch Trubisky. <laughs> don't get ridiculous now. So let's do our... <laughs> Stream of the week. All right. So my stream of the week at uh, at the quarterback position is going to be Kirk Cousins. Uh, he was 27 of 39 for 250 and two touchdowns through the air. Uh, man, really kept that game close against Seattle. Uh, they have the, the Vikings have the Falcons this week, who Teddy Bridgewater, our previous stream of the week. And remember, I said, hey, why don't you just keep targeting that Falcons defense if you can? Teddy B lit him up for 313 yep. yards and a couple scores. Uh, Kirk Cousins, widely available, currently rostered in just over 16% of leagues. I feel like you could go out and get him with a zero bid, maybe a buck if you're feeling frisky. Um, I feel like Kirk Cousins is great for anybody that's looking for answers uh, at quarterback. If you miss out on Dak, if you're the person that was the Dak manager uh, and Goff isn't there, I'm sorry, if you miss out on Dalton as the DAC manager and Goff and Fitzpatrick aren't there and you're just throwing darts, I would honestly, I would throw a dart at uh, Kirk Cousins this week against Atlanta. So he's my quarterback stream of the week. Yeah, that that's especially useful when we're coming up on bye weeks. I mean, Russell Wilson's yeah. on a bye coming up in week six. So that, you know, that that's a great, great replacement. Um if if that doesn't work, I mean, we just talked about Ryan Fitzpatrick. He's home against the Jets. The Jets are awful. They just fired. Well, they should fire their coach. They have not fired him yet. Dan um, Quinn got but, canned. I mean, but, no, I know, right? It's like Adam Gase still employed. <laughs> um, the, it, so that I mean, I, I would suggest Ryan Fitzpatrick. You know, e- either one of those two should be more than useful. Uh, I, I prefer Cousins uh, just because I think he has better weapons around him, especially now that Delvin got dinged up a little bit. Um, I, we, we don't really know what's going to happen uh, in that offense, but you, maybe you could expect them to throw a little bit more. Yeah. All right. Let's get into let's get away from quarterback completely. Now we're done or even our stream of the week is done. Let's get into uh, positional rankings, skill players, if you will. Uh, let's start at running back. Obviously, the claim, I think the number one waiver claim of the week is going to be Alexander Madison. Uh, Dalvin, Dalvin Cook exited uh, the game with a groin area injury and then returned. Wait, but then hold exited, on, what? And then... Uh, Dalvin Cook got hurt? You didn't... Re- what? You, how what? are you... You're just hearing about this? I Live breaking oh, I'm, news. I'm so surprised. I can't... I can't believe he got hurt. I just, oh man, who could have ever seen that one coming? That's, oh. You know what the worst part is, is if you guys man. go back and listen to any of our previous waiver shows, which we, you know, we've talked about several of these guys week after week. Alex has always said every show, oh, well, just waiting on Delvin Cook to get hurt. Just waiting on Del- Delvin Cook to get hurt. And here you go. Week six. I, I can't, I just can't. Wow. That's breaking news. Unbelievable. Alexander Madison had 20 rushes for 112 yards and then three receptions for another 24. Good for more than 15 plus points and half PPR. Um, However, 
I believe Palacero came out today and said that the results of Dalvin's testing today show that it was a, a actually a very minor injury and that he should be back extremely soon. And so if he if Madison is available, I think he's really only a one week a one week rental because yep. Minnesota's schedule is at home against Atlanta, a bye, and then Green Bay. So I think you give Dalvin a couple weeks off to recover. He comes back for the division matchup against Green Bay, if it's as minor as what's being reported today. So honestly, I wouldn't even break the bank for Madison if he was there, unless you plan on holding him for the entire season. If you're in like a 10-team league and you don't have Dalvin, then unless you're planning on holding him, uh, holding Madison for the whole season, I wouldn't spend a ton of fab on him. I would only spend 10, 20% on Madison. If he's a short-term rental, if, if you're the Dalvin manager, 15, then I'm, yeah. And then I, yeah, 15, 20 you, is he's a one week top 15 back. Then they go to buy. And then I think Dalvin comes back. So if you want a one week top 15 running back, Look, if you're 0 and 5 or 1 and 4, then maybe I'd be out here spending 30 bucks and go get yourself that top 15 back for a week and try and get a W. Yep. But it really should only be the desperate teams that are dropping some serious fab for Madison if he's just a one week rental. Yeah, I'm super bummed that he is not available in any of the four leagues that I'm in, which means I'm playing in relatively good leagues, unfortunately. I um and I don't even own him. Another bummer. I uh I I, th- I think you're right on. I, I think you have to discount him severely because theoretically, you know, Delvin's coming back, and then then you have to go you have to go through a buy too. Um, and you're so not yeah, want to hold it. You can't break the bank. But that's the thing is, is Delvin Cook going to stay healthy even once he comes back? Yeah. So maybe it is. Maybe it is worth spending money on Madison and keeping him on your bench. So when Dalvin Cook gets hurt again in a couple weeks, <laughs> because it's going to happen because Dalvin Cook always gets hurt, then it, it might be worth a little bit more just to just to hang on to him. If especially if you if you have like a you know we talked about some guys that, that you would think about dropping as an example JK Dobbins. You know if, if you have a JK Dobbins on your roster um, it would make sense to drop him for Alexander Madison. At least you could have Madison on your bench. He gets a couple more carries than Dobbins does every week at this point, and he has a higher upside Ouch. on the back end uh, if Dalvin were to get hurt. Ouch. Um, yeah, I would drop Dobbins for Madison. Um, I would also drop Naheem Hines, who hasn't done anything since week one. Um, let's move on. Oh. Don't should have should have saved your sauce. Let's move on to Damian Harris. Uh, he was on a bye last week. The week before had 17 rushing attempts for 100 yards. Sony Michelle still on IR. Uh, the one downside of Harris is he had no passing game involvement. However, maybe that maybe he's a little bit more involved this week. Um, we'll find out tomorrow night. Um, Currently rostered in 40% of leagues. How much fab are you spending on Harris? I really think it depends on your outlook, I guess. So what's your outlook for Harris? Because if you think that he could become a three down back or supplant Michelle, I think that that's one fab. And if you think that he's just a filler for Michelle while he's out, I feel like that's a very different number entirely. So I guess, what do you think? of Damian Harris and how much fab are you willing to, to spend? Another thing we don't know is what that offense looks back. Looks like when cam comes back, because keep in mind when cam is playing, he's the goal line back. So when Damian Harris is exploding with, you know, Brian Hoyer as his quarterback, it's very different than when cam Newton is his quarterback and cams playing in the shotgun more and, you know, not, you know, not under center as much as, as Hoyer was in that game, I uh, so I, I don't know what his outlook is because Damian Harris he seemed explosive, he seemed like he was better than Michelle, but they 
I mean, Michelle's still going to get carries. Burkhead, I mean, he's been getting touches every week. James White is back for passing down work. There is just so many running backs here. And again, the goal line back is Cam Newton. So I don't I don't know what his outlook is because you didn't get to see what it looks like in that offense. Now, right. should he be rostered? Absolutely. I, I would say that he should almost be rostered more than Michelle and Burkhead and James White at this point. But like if, if you have any of those three, I I would drop them for Damian Harris. But wow. we just don't know what it's going to look like. And if any of them are, I don't know if any of them are even playable. Yeah, that's the thing is, does it, does it turn from a, you know, 1A plus a 2B and 2C kind of thing to like a 1A, 1B with uh, Harris and Michelle splitting the early downs. And then you got James White and Burkhead splitting the passing down work. And it's it could just become a convoluted mess again. Or Damian Harris could be the guy. I would just try to bake that into how much you actually go out and bid on him. I would probably only spend like 10, 15 percent max on trying to land him, which I feel like. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm surprised if if he wasn't already picked up in your league last week, then I think you might be able to s- just swing in and grab a zero bid. Um, true. Uh, I, you know, in those six in those 60 percent of leagues. He didn't play this week, so when people sort by points or points scored last week, he's not going to show up because, uh, you know, they essentially had a buy because of COVID and everything got pushed back to to Sunday. So I, I think you might actually be able to just slip in and, and grab him for nothing um, if he's available in 60 percent of leagues. If they didn't pick him up after last week, why would they be picking him up after this week? That's just my thought, unless people are real, like unless you have a super short bench um, with with buys and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, that's, I I think I would try to, I, I, because I don't know how good he's going to be. He's somebody that I would only, that I would basically put a zero bit in because if I don't get him, I'm not heartbroken, but if I do, I'm, I'm pleased. Please me. All right. Let's get into some of our wide receivers. I mean, we, I guess. We could have talked about JD McKissick there. And there's some other like long, you know, deep waiver ads that you could make. But when we talk with you guys, when we talk you through our waiver claims, I really just want to focus on people who I think could present some season long value and not an absolute desperation. JD McKissick, here's four points. Like, just garbage unless you're in full PPR, which even then it's like a barely flex play. Um, just a complete bye week filler. If you're desperate. All right. <clears throat> now moving on to wide receivers, go ahead. Before we get started, go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe, do what you got to do. Send us some love. Now wide receiver one pickup of the week has got to be Chase Claypool currently wide receiver is he? wide receiver 15 in scoring through five weeks <clears throat> commanded 11 targets more than 32% target share out of the 34 big Ben attempts turned that into seven receptions 110 yards and three scores also had three rushing attempts for six yards and a fourth score on the ground. The usage inside what the 10 yard line on the ground. He was obviously Ben's favorite target in the game. He's only rostered in 8.8% of leagues. Alex, how much fab are you running out to drop on Chase Claypool and redraft? I do not think he should be your top waiver waiver target this week. I think T Higgins offers more season long value than Chase Claypool does, honestly. And the reason I say that is there's a couple of reasons. One of the wide receivers on the, his team, he ran the third most routes. So he was behind James Washington. He was behind Juju Smith Schuster. I understand that the targets were there, but he was not on the field as much as either one of those two. And that was after Deontay Johnson got hurt. 
I would much rather have Deontay Johnson than I would Chase Claypool. I would much rather have Juju Smith-Schuster than I would Chase Claypool. It was one week. He had not done really... I mean, he was fine. He caught a long touchdown. He's a he's a dynasty player for sure. But on a one-year redraft, how much value do you really think you're going to be getting out of him going forward once Deontay Johnson comes back? Chase Claypool is clearly their fourth best receiver from a who they're allocating snaps to. We've talked the last couple of weeks about be aware of Chase Claypool. He's, you know, slowly keeping up, creeping up on Washington's snap counts and he might take over some of those looks. That's absolutely true. Just because he went off for four touchdowns doesn't mean he'll have more than four. I don't I don't even know if he'll have four touchdowns the rest of the year. Just because he had him in one week does not mean that you should be overpaying for him to you, you want to pay for future performance not what he's done in the past. And that's the danger with bidding on waivers is, wow, this guy was really great. Let's go get him. And he's not going to do that again the rest of the year. I will guarantee you that. So well, that's why I think I'd rather go T Higgins than Chase Claypool. Yeah, I mean, he's obviously not going to score four touchdowns in a game again. I can I completely agree with you there. I just think that... Uh, See, I'm right about that. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> It's very hard for any player other than quarterbacks <laughs> to score four touchdowns in a game, and they have to do it by throwing them. <laughs> um, now, I just the schedule is appealing. Like the Steelers had going into the season, had the second easiest schedule based based on strength of schedule. Their bye weeks already out of the way, which is another plus. Um, I guess my yep. thought on his season long outlook is I really think that when Deontay comes back, it's not like Chase Claypool goes to the bench. I really feel like Chase showed everybody what he can do this week if given an expanded role. Granted, it was okay. ex- extremely, you know, like s- statistically skewed towards the ceiling of what his production could be. Um. I would say that I think James Washington, if I had to bet, probably disappears when Deontay comes back. And I haven't seen or heard anything as to how severe Deontay's injury is. Um, no, if, they they said that he's he has a good chance of playing next week. Interesting. OK, so if, if Deontay can start and play again as soon as next week, then really... I think that what it does is it could be like the Ravens backfield version of wide receivers where they just throw in a bunch of dudes and none of them get meaningful enough stats and any one of them could pop off and be a wide receiver two or top 15 or whatever guy that given week. But you're stuck starting all three of them trying to peg which one's going to go off like Juju didn't really do much in that game. Uh, because nope, Claypool absolutely took over. So if you can, if you can guess which one of those three are going to have the week, then, you know, you should be betting in Vegas, not just playing <laughs> fantasy football with your friends and family. Um, I would still try to roster him. He needs to be rostered a hundred percent to me I in, agree. in all leagues. I just would try to not break the bank to do it. Um, just because he obviously hasn't shown that he can do it in back-to-back weeks. We don't know what the workload is when Deontay comes back. I would spend 15% of fab to try to get him if I'm trying to be aggressive. Um, other than that, because if he's out here doing that, oh man, the ceiling is just so huge with him. It's, It's through the roof. I just don't know what realistically how much playing time. It really just comes down to the snaps. I don't know what kind of snap outlook he has for the rest of the season under Tomlin. Is if you if you could tell me that he was going to go out there and play 70 to 90% of snaps any given week for the rest of the season, I would say go out and spend 30 30 fab on him. But I don't know that. So and that's what you're going to run into in your league is somebody's going to go out and spend 30% of their fab on him this week and you're not going to get him. And guess what? You're going to be okay. 
Like, yes. He, yes, he had 11 targets this week. The, the first three weeks, he had targets of two, three, and four. So the, I, I get that clearly he has a high ceiling, but when all of their receivers are healthy, if, if Deontay Johnson was playing in that game, do you really think he'd have seven catches for 110 yards and three receiving one rushing touchdown? No the answer way. is no. I think, I think some, at least most of that would actually have gone to Deontay Johnson. So I, again, do not go out and, and break the bank on this guy. I know you might want to if you're rough at receiver. I personally think that T. Higgins, if he's available in your league and hasn't been picked up yet, is the better option of the two. And maybe you can buy a little lower on T. Higgins, even though we've been talking about him for three weeks at this point. But yeah, Chase Claypool, great game. That This, you know, you asked me earlier uh, in, in our pod here, would, would you drop, um, w- would I drop Big Ben for Goff or Fitzpatrick or Andy Dalton? And the answer is no, because of the weapons that Ben has and they they seem to like to sling it, and Ben feels healthy, and he looks healthy. I believe this is the most touchdowns he's ever thrown through his first four games. So that Ben is a better is a really good quarterback, and when he has the weapons, and and they're going to start going four wides with James Conner in the backfield and spreading defenses out and running it up. I really like the prospects of their offense um, at Buffalo Week 14, at Cincinnati Week 15, and then home against Indy in Week 16. Week 16 is a rough matchup for them, but you got to like the first two from a points perspective. So, yeah, I mean, Chase Claypool should be rostered. Wouldn't spend a ton on him. Uh, I'm I'm sitting more in the 10% range, honestly. Definitely makes it a lot easier for the Steelers to negotiate contracts uh, with uh, Juju in the offseason as his contract expires because it's like, hey, Juju, we, uh, we don't really need you, buddy. We got like, this bright big new shiny toy so but uh yeah hey juge how (laughs) much money do you want we have some weapons and we cannot pay you (laughs) oh lord all right that's what everybody tunes in for alex is singing now moving on uh (laughs) T. Higgins, currently wide receiver 37, caught four of eight targets for 62 yards, 27% target share, creeping up ever so higher, man. Just unbelievable target share. Two more targets than Boyd this week. Since starting in week two, here's the target breakdown. Boyd, 35. Higgins, 30. A.J. Green, 25. He's averaging eight targets a game over the last three weeks. AJ Green obviously re-injured his hamstring. If anybody watched the game, he did not return after halftime. Uh, he missed nearly all of training camp with that hamstring injury. Um, completely gave zero effort on a really badly thrown interception by Burrow as well. Oh I, man, that was that was totally garbage. unacceptable. I would drop AJ Green everywhere, and I would drop him like before. Yep waiver claims even get processed like i would just he's not it this year yeah and then there was there was video of him uh telling somebody on the sideline to just trade me evidently too so it's just not great t higgins though rostered in 42 percent of leagues so still qualifies we're gonna bang this t higgins drum man how much fab are you running out to spend on t higgins if he's available she bangs. So she bangs. targets. Uh, so, so, <laughs> oh, baby. Um, they, so T. Higgins, nothing the first week. But since then, targets of six, nine, nice, seven and eight. <laughs> and I just think like if he's going to consistently <laughs> have seven or eight targets every week, then. Uh, the floor is the floor is there. He's established the floor as like a you know, eight to 10 points a week. Again, that offense, Joe Burrow was on pace for the most pass attempts in NFL history uh, after week four. I don't know if that's still the case now, but he, um, they're going to keep airing it out. 
AJ Green's hurt. T. Higgins is clearly the number two. There, there's not a lot of competition. AJ Green is toast. And T. Higgins, I, he seems like he's the guy. So if he's not rostering your league, one, crazy, I guess. But yeah, you should you should go out and try to get him. Um, you, you know, not a super impressive week this last week. Four for 62. Um, only 8.2 in, in half PPR. I believe that's 10.2 in uh in ppr leagues so you know again not crazy good but somebody that should be rostered and is for sure a bi-week replacement if you need someone yeah i mean the big thing there was the matchup right against the ravens i mean i just i wasn't really expecting a whole lot out of that offense at all period um so i was just more so looking to see if they could move the ball at all the answer really there was no but when they were trying to move the ball, who were they trying to go to? And it was T Higgins uh, on a majority of Joe Burrow throws. Uh, next three games for Higgins are at the Colts, uh, home against the Browns, and then home against the Titans. So that's appealing. Uh, the playoff schedule is Cowboys, Steelers, Texans. So two of those three weeks, I feel like he's playable. Um, I think he's going to be season long value. We're starting to see yep. some rookie receivers continue to command larger target shares. I wouldn't be surprised. That, yeah, I think he at least finishes number two and could. There is a world where he could finish with the most targets on that team. So. Hmm. <clears throat> I don't think so, but yeah, it's, it's, it's still Tyler Boyd's show. Um, but but T Higgins is is a very serviceable number two. I would spend 15 to 20% fab on Higgins because the volume is there. If he has not been picked up in your league again, I I think you can get away with less than that and still get him in the 10% range. Um, Because if, if he hasn't been picked up yet, then he's probably not on people's radars. Again, if you're listening to this, you're probably doing more research than anybody else is in your league. And thank you for listening. T bangs. Um, T bangs. <laughs> oh baby, wait. T moves. T moves. I go crazy. No, nothing. I'm a better singer than he is, just for the record. And I, I hope everybody knows that. There's no singing yeah, involved in I'm that subs- song. It's just shouting. That's singing. I mean, oh. William Hung sung it in American Idol like 15 years ago. You don't think he's, he was singing? Yeah, I think like nobody's even going to understand what that reference was. Thank you for at least throwing the guy's name out. They absolutely will. Okay. If people don't know who William Hung is, just go look him up. American Idol, like circa 2005 or something like that. So you're welcome. I think I'm old. <laughs> but yeah, T, T, T Higgins, I think you, I, I don't think you need to spend more than more than 10 percent to get him. Um, if that's not a winning bid, that sucks. Um, but that's as much as I would go on him. Um, if if you're doing a traditional waiver system and I, I think you should use a waiver spot to pick him up. All righty, let's move on. LaVisca Chanel Jr. Currently wide receiver 27 junior top 30 wide receiver. Currently only rostered in 32% of leagues. Available in two-thirds of leagues. Um, Dropped seven receptions for 79 yards on eight targets. Had a rush as well for five yards. 11.5 fantasy points in half PPR scoring. DJ Chark left the game with an ankle injury in the fourth quarter. Did not return. However, even playing all the way into the fourth, He still only had four targets, three catches for 16 yards. So it's not like he was, you know, commanding heavy usage. And then Chenault came in and swooped up and took it from him after he left. No, Chenault was the one of these weeks. I'm going to start Brandon Cooks and uh, TJ Chark. I'm going to start the right one. Yeah. One of them I'm going to start. Whoever has the better week two weeks ago. TJ Chark, two touchdowns. Brandon Cooks, zero points. This week, bench Brandon Cooks, start TJ Chark, wrong again. One of these weeks, I'm going to get it right. <laughs> but until then, I'm just going to talk about LaVisca uh, Chenault. LaVisca Chenault, wide receiver 27. Uh, half PPR, he has double digit points in three out of five weeks. Full PPR, he has double digit points in four out of five weeks. 
Wide receiver seven consistent. We're seeing those target numbers grow. Um, I really think his role could continue to grow. Um, they're trying to get the ball to him and they're trying, they're putting him in the backfield and getting, getting him a couple carries a game as well. How much fab would you spend on LaVisca Chenault Jr.? Another tough one. Um, we thought that he was going to have more carries a couple weeks ago uh, when he started the season. Uh, week two, he had five carries and we were all kind of, wow, who, you know, who's this guy? Like, LaVisca Chenault, let's, let's all pick him up and start him against Miami. And he did nothing. And some people, you know, he went back to the waiver wire. He's not keen. Keelan Cole and you know he's the third wide out behind Chark and what are we really doing here um I mean LaVisca Chenault should be rostered in more leagues than he is clearly um if he's going to be putting up 10 points a week his targets 4-4 six, 6-6 six, six, 8 uh this this last week by the end of the season if he stays on that path he's going to have like 18 targets a game I mean that's pretty good um I just um that that's not going to happen. That was a joke. So, <laughs> fantasy football, and you know, sorry, bad analysis. Um, I uh, he, he should be rostered. Um, he has a tough playoff matchup. Um, so that would give me some pause. Uh, home against Tennessee at Baltimore. Home against Chicago is uh is not fantasy friendly. Um, for the Jacksonville Jags. So. Maybe trade James Robinson while he's hot because he might not do a whole heck of a lot in the fantasy playoffs. Um, I I don't think I'd spend more than five five percent. Um, if you can get him at five percent, that's great. If you can't, then bummer. But uh, yeah, he should be rostered. Wow, five percent. So you like T Higgins more? Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. Well. Let's uh we're going to do a little breaking news here. Breaking news add to our waiver wire column. So we film these on Mondays and post them on Tuesday just so that you guys are able did, to Hold on, did did Delvin Cook get hurt again? <laughs> we post so that way we can post it on Tuesday in time for you guys to watch the show and get your claims in. Uh no, but Keenan Allen is hurt and evidently out. So I would say yeah. look for Mike Williams, who's currently rostered in about a third of leagues. Um, yeah, I, I'm not exactly sure. Quite back injury. So I just all the tweets to, about Keenan Allen are not great. So I don't know. I don't know. Too early to tell yet. But I would I broke uh, my back spinal. Uh, maybe maybe evaluating adding uh, Mike Williams or Guyton of all people um, uh, back to go. back to LaVisca I would probably spend 15 to 20% honestly I am so high on LaVisca you're gonna run out of money though you gotta well, you gotta stay low you can't be doing that every week you know that's not that's not I, entirely like, true though because I'm only trying to add like one of these guys like theoretically, I only have room to add like one or two guys. So then I'm no, I know putting them but in order. Like if you're bidding on more, if you're bidding on more than one of those guys and you happen to get both and you're screwed. Now, if you're only trying to fill one spot, I mean, it's all how you play it. Yeah. All no, right. Yeah. Um, now we got some wide receiver suggestions that make me feel dirty. The first one is Alshon Jeffrey. Uh, he's only rostered in just over 13% of leagues. Alshon could make his return, uh, to the Eagles this week. Um, whoever the healthiest receiver is out of Deshaun, Alshon and Rager is going to come back to a hundred million percent snap share. So, I am picking Alshon because he hasn't gotten re-injured yet. He's still recovering from an injury that he suffered months and months and months ago. So it just needs to heal and then he will be okay. So I am hoping that Alshon will be the most healthy once he comes back, which theoretically could be as early as this week. Um, You like Jalen Rager? 
I mean, the way the rookie wide receivers have been playing this year, and he was one of the first ones taken. So, yeah, I like Jalen Rager because, I mean, if the Eagles scouted correctly, then why would he not be as good as some of the guys that, that are going off the, the IOKs? I know C.D. Lamb was, um, was taken in front of him, I believe. Um, you got T. Higgins. You got your boy, Mr. Jefferson. So yeah, I, I like Rager as as more of a flyer. Um, he, he's on IR I still, so he's somebody you could pick up and stash in an IR slot if you have him available in your league. I uh, yeah, I, I'm more on the Rager train only because he doesn't have a piano on his back like Alshon Jeffrey does. Okay, I get that. Uh, I just I don't know. I don't really have a whole lot of opinions here on the Eagles offense other than I kind of just want to stay away from it altogether unless you want. Yeah. I mean, two weeks ago, it was Greg Ward and last this last week, it was Fulgham that everybody's going to go out and spend their fab on. I don't like either of them for sustained value th- over the course of the season, which is why I don't really want to recommend either of them because I think if anybody comes back healthy for the Eagles, they will immediately be the starter and garner those targets. So I would rather have those guys and be able to play them in another week or two, or maybe, you know, as early as this week, if you get lucky, um, if Alshon is there, can we, uh, can, can we do another? Go ahead. Can, can can we do another edition of uh, who would you trade one for one Zach Ertz with tight ends? Because this is becoming a, a new weekly segment <laughs> where uh, two weeks ago, if if you've been uh, an ad, an avid listening of the Sackos, uh, Jason uh, Shellcross, my <laughs> wonderful host of uh, host of this exhilarating podcast, said that he would only trade. Zach Ertz one for one for Travis Kelsey. Uh, last week, I believe he added a couple players to that list. Uh, it consisted of Kelsey, Mark Andrews, uh, and George Kittle. And I believe that was it straight up for Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz, um, we're through five weeks, is uh, tight end 16. So, Jason, I present to you who would you trade straight up for Zach Ertz? Just I a would... simple yes or no answer will, will suffice. All right, okay. Travis Kelsey. Yep. Mark Andrews. Yep. Darren Waller. Yep. Robert Tanyan. Oh, Bobby T. Bobby T's me. Uh, crap. Probably. Jimmy Graham. Currently tight end five. Is he really? Yeah. I feel dirty. Oh, Oh, boy. Mike, Mike Gesicki is currently tight end six. Oh. George Kittle, seven. Noah Fant was hurt. He's uh, tight end eight. I would trade Tyler him for Higby Fant. Is nine. I would trade him for Higby. Johnu Smith. Yes. He's 10. Uh, Dalton Schultz is 11. Well, if Dak was still there, then absolutely. Yep. TJ Hawkinson is 12. Yes. <laughs> Mo Alley Cox is 13. I would trade Zach Ertz for a ham sandwich at this point. <laughs> I would there's not much I wouldn't trade <laughs> Zach Ertz for to try and get some value. If, if uh, I would trade him if away. You have Zach Ertz and uh, and you took him in the fourth or fifth round. First of all, I think it was a good pick. No, it was a good pick. It just hasn't worked and he's bad. And uh, there, there's actually a Twitter account that says, uh, you know, for, for baseball, it's like, has, did Chris Bryan hit a home run? And it like tweets out, yes, every time he hits a home run. For oh. Zach Ertz, uh, every, every time he has a catch, it says, did Zach Ertz break a tackle? And the answer is no, because he never breaks a tackle. And he just does not look great. And uh, for whatever reason, Wentz is like, he's the only option they have. And Wentz still isn't thrown on the ball. Uh, Zach Ertz is almost droppable, even though you have to like, I have him in a league and I'm going to keep starting him all year. But you got to look <laughs> at other options. And <laughs> idiot. And in, include. 
<laughs> including uh, Robert Tanyan. You would start him over Bobby T. No, I'm just saying that you need to like you need to be looking at somebody like Robert Tanyan as replacing oh, yeah. him until Zach Ertz shows that he can do something. Let's get into Bobby Tanyan. Uh, currently tight end four, five touchdowns from weeks two through four. His uh, latest line was six catches for 98 yards and three tutties in week four. He goes against the Bucks in week six, currently giving up the eighth most points to the tight end position. Rostered in f- about 48% of leagues, about half a leagues. Um, I would absolutely draft him, or I'm sorry, I would drop Zach Ertz probably to pick up Bobby Tanyan. Um, oh, yeah, that's so hard. <laughs> I, I, told, I, I told somebody to oh. drop Zach Ertz like two weeks ago to pick up Dalton Schultz and then, or, or just play Dalton Schultz over Zach yeah. Ertz. And it would have worked out, except Dak got hurt. Literally, Dalton Schultz had as many points as Zach Ertz in the whole game on the on Dalton's first drive this last week. Like, Yikes! If Andy Dalton can just, oh, I'm so Dalton Schultz was a diamond in the rough, but he's gone. So now all of our hopes and dreams are on Bobby Tanyan. Um, although there's another gem I want to talk about after him, Robert Tanyan though. The thing with him is Devontae wasn't playing. So Devontae's going to come back. Devontae's going to yep. get those red zone looks. And De- Robert Tanyan played the yep. best football game of his life. And he's never going to have three scores in a single game again. I don't think he'll ever have. I wouldn't be surprised if he had uh, zero two score games for the rest of the season, let alone three. Um, I think he finds the end zone again. Um, but I just. I don't I, and keep in yeah. keep in mind he was playing the uh the forever giving Atlanta Falcons offense uh in week four when when he did have his three touchdowns and Alan Lazard wasn't playing and uh you know it there was just so much going on that kind of led to a perfect storm of of Tanyan. No and Lazard, no Adams. He'll be okay. Yeah. I just uh he'll he'll be okay. He did nothing week one when everybody was healthy, but, um, you know, he hasn't had under nine and a half points in, uh, in half PPR since week two. Um, so yeah, you got to start him. Um, especially if you have Zach Ertz. Mm, not great. I, I would not drop Zach Ertz just for the record. I, I think you have to, you have to keep him. The, the track record there is too long for you to drop him. You have to keep him, but you don't have to start him. So I would probably bench him in favor yep. of a multitude of other guys that are still available. If TJ Hawkinson is there, please get him. Pretty much anybody. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Our last waiver claim of the night is Austin Hooper. He has 17 targets in the last two games including 10 against Indianapolis in week five. He had a five for 57 line, 27% target share. He's rostered in about 45% of leagues. He was rostered a lot more than that to start the season, but was slow out of the gate. So he got dropped. Um, How much fab would you spend on Hooper? No, um, I'm assuming you can probably get him for nothing. So I would, I would spend zero dollars. Really? I do like, yeah, I do five, five. It's a tight end. There's not the, again. I, 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 no, I, I said this last week. One, I am a save as much fab as you possibly can until you get to the end of the season, and hopefully there's that one running back that gets hurt that you can go spend all of your fab on because you have the most in the league. I do think that there is a strategic advantage to having the most fab in your league and you need to monitor how much other people in your league have because I think there's a huge advantage to having the most fab in your league. So that's why I'm always on the low side. When it comes to Austin Hooper, there's not that many people that are going to be bidding on tight ends because most people already have one. Um, And so the amount of people that you're bidding against is going to be two one or two maybe and so for that reason that's why i stay with the zero bid to keep your sauce save it until you need it 
there's no point in spending it on currently tight end 19 when you don't know if anybody else is going to be bidding on him. And if somebody else gets him, again, that's fine. But I'd rather keep my fab for something that I actually need down the line. All righty. You heard it here first from Alex Krog. Yeah, I do about, I don't know, a couple bucks on him. Just try and get him over somebody, that desperate person who's trying to be sneaky and do a zero bid. But there you go. Um, I think that covers zero it for us for this week. Did we talk about how much fab we we're going to spend on Bobby Tanyan? Did, did we actually put a number out there? Uh, let's I would do um, I, I think it's I, I, I'm probably in the 10% range. Yeah. Five to 10. Not get him. Realistically is the answer. Yeah. That's only if you're desperate. Yeah. All right. Should have picked him up last week <laughs> if he was available. But yeah, uh, let's see. Do you know the Green Bay bye week offhand? Yes. No. Yeah, it was this past week. Yeah, they so, were just on bye. You know what? If he wasn't picked up over the bye week, then he's still available. So you, I mean, you could get him for probably cheaper than 10%. I would think you could get him for a few bucks if he's still there. Yeah. And if you just lost Dak yep, this week and you've been plugging Dalton Schultz in your lineup, maybe you want to pick pivot to Bobby Tanyan. But all right. I think that does it for I this agree. week. Let's transfer to our social media page. Thank you guys for listening to our awful singing today. Uh, I promise we will keep it up and keep doing it every episode because it's one of the things that brings us joy. Now, hopefully Tuesday football goes well. Hopefully the COVID stuff ends. Hopefully the, the schedule gymnastics are over and everybody continues to test negative or as limited as possible. And we don't have another Titans breakout and no week 18s, but we'll see. Um, with that, I don't have anything else to say besides T bangs, T bangs. Have a good night. Remember the Titans. Good movie. Thank you for listening to another episode of the fantasy football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.